Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a question I saw come up on the forum as well as on the comments, asking how do you transition from a VOR to an ILS approach? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that and kind of the best way that I know how is uh, flying one. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we're sitting here, we're just south of Hartford VOR, which is uh, located in lovely Connecticut. And what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and call up our little approach plate that we're going to be using today. So what we're going to be doing is uh, flying from Hartford VOR along the 25 radial here. It's going to take us away from this point, again, radial 025, that's going to be the one we dial in, and we're going to be crossing this point right here called the Hadex intersection. How are we going to know that we hit this intersection? Well, we're actually going to triangulate two VORs, actually a VOR and an ILS. We know that this particular position will be 9.9 .9 nautical miles away, and we know that this particular position will be 12.2 nautical miles away from Bradley. By putting these two different lines together, we have the Hadex intersection, which means as we're cruising along here, we're going to have to pay attention very, very, very carefully for when we cross this radial, which happens to be at 328 degrees. Now, you're probably sitting there going, oh man, you're making me crazy here. What do we actually need to know? Well, what do we actually need to know? Well, the first one is we know we have to cross Hadex at 2,500 feet. This actually says we can be anywhere between this. We also notice there's this lovely thing that says no PT. Procedure turns are a pain in the butt, and we're not going to worry about them today. We also know that once we get to this point, we're going to take our left onto the 328. So let's go ahead and dial in everything into our computer, and let's actually go ahead and try the flight out itself. All right, here we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we're on the correct VOR here. Now, if you remember, the instruction said to take the 25 degree VOR. So that means our course has to be set to 25 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the sucker and give it a couple little wiggles here. We're actually currently frozen in the air to make this a little bit simpler. So we're going to hit this point and basically take a right if you want to kind of think about it. Now, a smarter version of me would do one of these kind of things and actually attempt to intercept it to be a little bit smoother. And that's exactly what I'm going to have the aircraft do. I'll actually unpause here so it's not freaking out on us. I'm going to go ahead and arm the navigation hold here. And as soon as we get closest, notice it turned white, by the way, which means it's waiting to capture the VOR. It will capture the VOR as soon as this needle starts freaking out, as you're going to say. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to make sure we're at the correct altitude. Remember, 2,500 was the feet that we want to get to. 2,500 feet has been selected. We can start descending pretty much any time, so I'm actually going to start that right away. I'm going to order up a vertical speed, and we'll do 500 feet per minute downwards, and I'll crack the throttle back like a little tiny bit. Really don't have to fight that too much. Now we have to start getting ready. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Watch it. Whoa, there goes the needle. All right, so now we have to get ready for the actual landing part of the flight here. So go ahead and pop on the desktop again real quick. Looks like we're looking for 108.55, which is going to be our frequency that we're going to be using here. So there's a couple different places we can put that. I'm a fan of doing it this method. So I'm going to go ahead and put 108.55 here so it's armed so we can do our landing. But I'm also going to go down here and dial in 108.55 so that we can monitor it on our approach down to our landing. So I'm going to go swap it. This should say, yeah, there it is, I-I-K-X. You're probably saying, what, 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 what? If you head back over here, you can see I-I-K-X. So we know we're on the correct frequency here. Uh, that's lovely. The other thing we can do now is I can actually come down here and I can dial this in so that it will show exactly where we need to be. So right now, bearing one selected, I'm going to go ahead and activate bearing two. And now it says I-I-K-X. ILS. So I can actually shut this off to eliminate confusion. So what's going to happen now is when we start to pick up the ILS frequency directly, we're going to see a little line up here. Actually, let's go ahead and clean that up to make it a little bit easier. There we go. And you can see right now the needle is pointing straight backwards. Does not surprise me in the slightest because we're not lined up for it. Now, if you remember a minute ago, we were taking a look at where we're coming from. We know that we need to be 12.2 nautical miles away from Hartford in order to be actually be crossing that particular point. Now, you're probably saying, well, it's actually not 12.2. My apologies. If you actually take a look back at the plane, we need to be 9.9 .9 nautical miles away, 12.2 away from the 108.55. The next thing we need to know is that we're going to be on a 328 degrees here. So one of the things we can do to kind of mentally prepare for this approach as we're coming down is we can lock on a heading mode, fits with everything so that it's ready for us when we get a little closer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll manually select the heading, select the heading mode, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch CDIs like a real pro here. And look at that. It automatically went to the proper frequency and automatically recognized it as a localizer. It automatically lined it up to the correct angle. That is one of the great quirks of this particular version of the G1000. I love that. So we're going to go back to the VOR. Everything's been pre-configured. We're now ready to put this plane on the ground. So what are we going to be watching for? Well, I'm actually going to go back to my PDF options real quickly. I'm really, really interested in the DME value here. Unfortunately, I can't come in here and set the DME. Actually, I could if I wanted to. DME2, ah, I'd have to go ahead and change who the DME is. Go to this. We're actually going to tell it to be navigation two so we can track that distance. Awesome. Let's go ahead and close that out. 
So now normally what we have, let's go ahead and put the DME away again. We should be able to open it up. Yeah, there it is. See, we're 15.4 nautical miles away from Nav2 now. So this way I can actually track both of these, check this out, at the same exact time. I can see my distance from Hartford and I can see my distance from here. So when this says 9.9 .9, and this up here tells us that we're at 12.2, we'll know that we were crossing that particular position. Now what I actually will do is if you take a look over here on our actual display, you can see our aircraft is uh, zipping along right towards the Hadex intersection. And remember when we hit there, we have to take that left turn to go ahead and put us down on the ground. So I actually call the sucker back up again, you were cruising right along this 25. Now the question raised and the purpose of this video is how we transition between those two. Notice I've spent this entire time setting everything up. I haven't had to do anything else yet because everything is kind of pre-set up, pre-ready to go. One thing I will do is remember we're on VOR hold right now. I'm actually going to select a heading that is going to enable us to carefully intercept it. So if you want to think about it visually, we're basically going this way. We need to be facing this way. So if I pick a heading that's kind of between the two, I can transfer at any time over to the CDI and the aircraft will basically jump into that direction. So take a look at our distances. We're at 14 nautical miles to go. The aircraft just leveled up. I'll go ahead and rev up the engine a little bit here. We're at 205. Remember 9.9 .9 and 12.2 will be that magical point. Now, some of you are probably going, well, how did you know that that was the point to go? Well, the reality is you have to listen to what air traffic control tells you. What they'll do is they'll say clear to ILS approach, oh, such and such, you know, and um, proceed this heading, file this right ideal, cross this waypoint. Notice there's actually two here. We have the Homey intersection, which is 6.2 nautical miles away, which is really intended for small planes like us. And then we have the much, much further out one, which is this radio right here, the 25 radio, which gives us a lot more wiggly room in order to go safely put the plane down on the ground. So we're going to go ahead and do some quick idiot checks here. Let's see. I'm just going to go back over here. We're going to confirm our minimums. Uh, 580. Doesn't bother me at all. Well, it's 371. So we'll come down here. We'll go ahead and set up our minimums. Let's see. Minimums are going to be established. What was it? 380. So we can only do better metric minimums. 380. Do, do, do. It's not nearly as exciting as like an Airbus or something like that. But hey, I don't argue. Time of ref. Look at this. 12.7. Oh, oh, we're getting close. Of course, if we wanted to confirm it, we could just look over here. And again, I'm not using a GPS right now. This is an excellent time when we get within a half a mile of our destination to immediately switch over to a heading hold or to swap CDIs. Ready? I'm going to go ahead and uh, set it up. 9.5. So we have a half an nautical mile of way to go. This is a good time to go ahead and shut off navigation hold, swap to the other frequency. Notice it labbed on. Go ahead and press the approach button. And now the aircraft is going to land itself. So as you can see, we're just crossing Hadex. We're going and taking our left turn. This is going to set us up. Let's make sure everything works. Our speed is a little high. We can see we're a little bit below glide slope, which is expected. Remember, we're 12 nautical miles out. And we are a little bit to the right of the actual localizer here. But what's going to happen is now that we're on this hold, this aircraft is going to go ahead and line itself up. But you can see how I was able to jump between those two positions. Now, another thing I usually like to do, too, is I like to prepare for what's going to happen if things don't go well. Uh, the missed approach is going to ask us to go up to Barnes. And we're going to be basically locked onto the sucker down here. So let's just go ahead and confirm it. Uh, let's see here. It looks good. Procedure not available. Procedure you're not available. Missed approach fix is going to be Barnes Air Force. That's a 113.0. And I believe when you take off, I hear it is. Missed approach, climb to 4,000 and then right turn direct bath vortex. So the frequency for that is 113. So we have to actually get ready for things not going well. So I'll go ahead and slide that in there. Uh, one trick that I learned that works really, really well for this is if you go back to your other radio, set this down to 113, which remember is our missed approach fix, swap it. It should say bath. And what I can do is I can go clean this up down here a little bit. Again, this is a lot of head down time, but that's all right. So I go to bearing two, and you can now see exactly where I need to point the plane in the event that we have a missed approach situation. Because remember, we just pop up and go whoop, right over to the right. So let's go ahead and do some quick idiot checks here. Uh, we have ourselves, we're coming up on glide slope. Uh, the next waypoint we're going to be hit is that homey. Remember how that one had a special intersection we could hit? Again, we've done this completely VOR so far. It does not matter if we're flying a DC-6. It doesn't matter if we're flying a Cirrus. It's all going to work exactly the same. It's just that the actual knobs and dials and everything are going to be a little bit different here. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time a little bit here, save us a little bit of room. We're going to go ahead and capture it. Two, three. Notice the GS is flashing, which means we're ready to go. We're in a Cessna 172 SP, which means uh, when we do capture the glide slope, the standard recommended procedure is to go ahead and dump one notch of flaps down just to kind of help slow us down. Ugh, this weather is gross. Actually, it's funny because our weather today, this morning, this is Saturday morning, literally looks like this, only it's a lot rainier. So it kind of happens. All right, we're under 110. We're going to slap down that first notch of flaps. 
Now, one of the tricks and things you got to remember with an ILS approach, and I've done tons of these virtually, is at the end of the day, you're going to be coming in faster than you expect because of how steep the glide slope actually is. You know, you think, uh, oh, you know, it's not that bad. It's only going to be, you know, we're approaching uh, kind of steep here. It's a three degrees. It's not, not that much, not that much. Believe it or not, three degrees is a lot. And I can already see the end of the runway, which means things are going pretty well for us here. So again, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. One, two, three. I'll go ahead and look out the window. Getting close to the ground. I've flown this ILS approach in the real world in a Cessna 172. Of course, the one I flew was from the 1970s. I didn't have any of these doodads. <laughs> it was a super fun approach because I could not believe how hard you have to push the controller down in order to get it. Like it, it really, it happens. First of all, it happens way faster than it seems to be happening now. And the second point is you'd be really, really, really impressed. Before flight is uh, giving me a little heads up here saying I'm getting a little close to the ground. It's kind of a neat little thing. We'll go ahead and drop down our last couple notches. Coming down down to the floor, we'll go ahead and make sure things are good. We'll do our last minute checks. Go ahead and give it a couple extra throttle. Lights look good, looks good, looks good, looks good. That looks good. All right, we're going to get to our 60 knots, which is the approach speed on this particular aircraft. One last check, make sure everything's looking good. I'm going to get ready for the accident, you know, in the event that we can't see the runway, or maybe there's somebody who's still on the runway, and all it's just a matter of uh, gently putting this thing down to the ground. All right, looks good, looks good. All right, we're looking for our minimums now. Our minimums, again, we're 380 feet. Like I said, I'll cheat just a little bit because I know you folks are busy. And that's about enough cheating. Two, three. Autopilot off. We're well within minimums now. Let's go ahead and put this thing on the ground. Wow, that's a crosswind. I was not expecting that. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as I help showing you how you can transition from a VOR directly to an ILS. Most ILS approaches are actually designed in such a way that you have the ability to make that kind of a transition. The only ones you're not going to see with that type of transitions are going to be your good folks. Wow, it's really turbulent. Uh, those good folks who do RNAVs and things like that, those are a little bit trickier. I actually have to put the wing down. This is really, really windy. Okay, right on the thousand footers, and we're down. Sorry, wheels. Oh, sorry, wheels. Brakes. <laughs> right in the center line. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as showing you how you can transition from a VOR to an ILS. The important thing is you've got to constantly be thinking about what's going on. When you're first practicing that skill, I really recommend having some kind of GPS just to kind of keep yourself straight. As you get used to it, uh, you'll find it actually be kind of a satisfying approach. But other than that, enjoy.